Here in Painter, we're going to create our project. So we'll go to File, New. And here for the template, I'm going to choose this PBR Metallic Roughness. And here for the mesh, we'll click Select and Browse and choose the mesh that we're going to use for our project. Now, here in this case, I have some maps that were already baked. And I know the normal format is OpenGL. So for the normal map format, I'm going to switch this to OpenGL. And then here in this section, I can add all of the pre-baked maps. So here I'll click the Add button. And here in my Bakes folder, I'm going to select all of these maps, which is the normal and these ambient occlusion, and then click Open to load them. As long as you follow the appropriate naming convention, which can be found in the Substance Painter documentation, the maps will automatically be assigned to their additional map slot in each texture set. Now here in this case, the naming convention doesn't match. So I'm going to show you how to manually set the additional maps. So one last thing for the document resolution, I'm going to set this to 2K and then click OK to create my project. So here I have my project. Here I have the texture sets, which are just the materials that were set in iClone. And here I have my additional maps. So you'll notice that none of the maps have been assigned. So here, what we're going to do is come over to the shelf and I can click this project category to filter images that I've imported into my project. Here you can see I have my normals and my ambient occlusion. Now I could also just bake textures here directly inside of Painter and we're going to do some of that here in just a moment. But for now, let's just reapply the maps that we've already baked in an external application. Here you can see that I'm working under the arms so I need to make sure that I grab the arms normal which is here and I can simply just left click and drag and drop this right over top of the normal map input to apply it. I can do the same thing with my ambient occlusion, or I could click the button here, and you can see that the mini shelf is already filtering based on project, and I can choose the map through this mini shelf pop-up, such as arms occlusion. So we'll do this here, and this applies the normal map as well as my ambient occlusion. So here, I've gone ahead and assigned all of these additional maps to each one of my texture sets. And so here is the result. Now what I'd like to do is bake some additional maps that I'm going to use throughout the texturing process. So here, I'm just going to click this Bake Textures button. Now, I don't need a normal, so I'm just going to uncheck this. Also here for my output size, I'm just going to set this to 4K. And here, I'm going to make sure to bake a world space. We're going to be baking an ID, aim and occlusion, curvature, position, and I don't need a thickness, so we're just going to disable this. Now here, if I click this button, it takes me to some parameters. I want to make sure that I set the color source here to material color. Now you'll notice here that the texture set is set to this upper armor upper male and that's because this is the texture set that was enabled when I click the bake textures button. However, I want to make this change and I want to apply this to all of the texture sets. So now that I've changed the color source to material color, I'm just going to click this apply to all. So now that's set correctly for all the texture sets. So now we'll click the common button to go back here to our high poly parameters. And now I want to make sure that I load in a mesh that contains ID materials that I'm going to use in this ID bake. Here you can see the soldier mesh in a 3D program and I have assigned several materials that are going to represent different material IDs and I'm going to bake those to an ID map that I can use to quickly mask in Substance Painter. I simply exported this model to an FBX file. So here back in Painter for the high definition mesh parameter, I'm going to click this page button and I'm going to come over to the FBX and here is the ID mesh that I had just shown in my 3D program. I'm going to choose this and click open. Now, this isn't really a high definition mesh. It's not the way it's being used here in this process. Here, I'm just using it simply for my ID baker. So now that I have everything set up, what I'm going to do now is click this bake all texture sets. And that's going to process or bake all of these maps for all of the texture sets. So let's do this now. So now you can see the baking process has finished. Each texture set has all of the additional maps set. So here we'll jump over to the arms and you can see the additional maps have all been placed appropriately. Now you'll also notice that I did rebake that ambient occlusion. I had imported an ambient occlusion and then I just baked it again. So one of the reasons behind that is if I already have a normal map added here to this additional map slot and then I bake but the normal's turned off so I'm using this normal map, Painter will convert the ambient occlusion from the normal which means that some of the normal data that I have such as maybe screws or bolts or things like that will be included in this new ambient occlusion. So that's why I chose to rebake the ambient occlusion in this case using Painter's Bakers. So now we can run through some of the concepts for creating textures here inside of Painter. What I've done ahead of time is created some smart materials and you can see I've filtered those here in my shelf. So for example, I have this soldier paint. 
let's use this. So I'm just going to left click and drag and drop this here into my layer stack. And I'm currently working on the armor upper male. And you can see that this is now providing cool edge wear and things like that here automatically. What this group is made up of is a fill layer. And here I'm using a finishing filter to create some nice detail to the metal. I'm using a levels here to remap roughness values for a grunge texture that I have applied here to my roughness channel. That makes up my base layer. So if we turn off our paint, that is what this looks like. This is our base metal. On top of that, I have another fill layer, which is just this simple color. This is also using a roughness map here in the roughness channel, and I'm processing the value ranges here with a levels effect. Then I have a mask, which is using this metal edge wear and a grunge scratch map to produce the edge wearing effect. Of course, I can go back to the generator and start to uh, change some of these parameters to dial up or down this wear effect. So now that we have something like this, we then need to mask this material to the appropriate areas on the mesh. So what I can do here is just right click and choose add mask with color selection. This adds the color selection tool and you can see that the ID map that we baked is now set and ready for us to use. All I have to do is under colors, use the pick color button. And then here in the UI, I just need to click where I would like to place this material. For the painted metal, I would like to place that in the red ID area. So I'll just left click. And now you can see that that material has been masked. I can also go back here to the material at any time. This is a fill layer here on the color channel. This is my base color. And I'm just gonna switch the color. And I'm just going to pick another color, maybe something like this yellow. And so that takes care of my painted metal. So now let's add some more materials. I also have this soldier metal. So let's drag and drop this guy here into my layer stack. This is this metal. Here we can see if we just take a look at what this is made of. Again, it's just a fill layer using a finishing filter. Uh, here on the fill layer, I have uh, just a color set and I have a grunge map here in the roughness channel, which is uh, having its levels remapped here on the roughness channel. Uh, here on top of that, we have just another metal as indicated here by our metal value set to one, a little bit of a brighter metal reflectance value. And that's being masked here by our mask editor with a curvature value set to one. So here I'll right click, add mask with color selection, use my ID pick. And here I'm going to place this here on the orange ID. If I just rotate around here towards the back, you can see here uh, that metal is now showing up where it needs to based on the IDs that I set. So that'll take care of our metal. Here I have another smart material. This is the soldier carbon fiber. Let's drag and drop that here into the layer stack. And here is the material. Again, if we take a look at what this is made of, uh, we can see that uh, here we have another fill layer. Again, following kind of the same procedure where I have a grunge map here in the roughness channel. Uh, using levels just to kind of remap that value so uh, it looks correct. And then here I have another fill layer. This time only the height channel is used and you can see here that I have my height slider. Now this is being masked so I have a black mask. Here I have a fill with a procedural weave pattern. That pattern is projection is set to triplanar and I have a lot of tiling and I've scaled the UVs pretty high here about 35. So now with it set up this way, I have kind of a procedural approach to the height depth. So for example, if I wanted to increase that, I could just simply just change my slider here to get more of an increased height depth. Or if I want to invert the height, I could simply just move the slider towards the negative end. So here you can see that I've just set slightly above zero. And this gives me this kind of carbon fiber type material. Again, we're going to mask this. So right click, add mask with color selection, pick color, and now I'm going to choose the green ID. And so now I've placed that material where it needs to go. Lastly, we're going to use this soldier leather. Let's drag this guy here into the layer stack. We'll take a look at what we have. Again, pretty much the same process. We have a fill layer. Uh, we have the same kind of grunge map in the roughness channel, levels to kind of process the ranges. Here I'm using that similar technique where I have my height channel. And here I'll and just increase its value just a bit more so we can see uh, this a bit more clearly here in our viewport. Uh, we're masking our height and we're using a fill and you can see I'm using the cells to pattern to create kind of this leather pattern and then I've anchored this height mask. This is going to allow me to take this height information and then use this in one of my generators. So now to create a little bit of wear to this leather, I have another fill layer on top. I've simply have this set to base color 
And here, if we just set the value just a little bit brighter, let's do something like this so we can really see the difference. You can see the wear that we have on the edges. Uh, we've just masked this base color. Here's our generator. Here's our mask. We have a mask editor. Here it's using uh, full curvature amount. If we scroll down, you can see in here is where underneath the micro height is where I'm referencing. And as I roll over this anchor, you can see it kind of highlights here in the layer stack. This is where we're referencing that height mask that we created that I mentioned before. Then we scroll up here to our micro details, and then I have the micro height enabled, and I did a slight adjustment here to the curvature intensity. This allows me to take this height information, which is my leather pattern, and have that modulate this curvature mask that I'm creating. And then on top of that, I have another fill, which is just a simple grunge procedural. And of course, we have full control over all these settings. Keeping things procedural like this as I create my textures allows me to work really quickly and then of course make a lot of iterations. So that takes care of this soldier leather. So now let's right click and choose add mask with color selection, pick color, and this time we're going to place this leather here in the purple ID. So now we've placed this leather in the correct locations here on the, on the mesh. So now you can see that this layer stack here for this armor is made up of these four materials. And what I'd like to do now is simply instance this setup that I have with the color selection masking across all of the other texture sets. And so a really quick way to do that would be to simply just group everything. So here I'll create a new folder and we're going to call this soldier. So this is like the base overall kind of color scheme or material scheme for this soldier asset. We will shift left select all of our layer groups and just drag and drop them here into the layer soldier. So now that we have this in place, I'm just going to right click and then choose to instantiate across texture sets. In my dialog window here, I'm going to make sure that all of my texture sets are enabled and then just simply click OK. Now Substance Painter will recompute this instantiation across all the texture sets. And just like that, you can see that I've fully textured the asset here with just in a matter of minutes. Now, what's really great about this is since all of the other layer stacks, all the other texture sets are now referencing this instance group, I can now go back and make changes. So for example, let's say that I wanted to make a variation on the overall color. So let's go back to our color and choose a different color. Maybe this time we'll choose something like a red, like an orangish red like this here. And you can see that now everything updates. So any changes that I make here to this upper texture set, which again is my source, all of the reference layers are going to update along with it. So here in this case, I'm just going to hit Control-Z to undo this and go back to this original color that I had. So here in this kind of upper area, it looks like I missed uh, some of these hoses. Uh, not a problem at all. So what we want to do here is I think I'll just use this carbon fiber. So I'll go back here to this color selection. I'll hit the pick color. And here I'm just going to go in and choose this value. So it's, it was a slightly different ID. Uh, I just didn't see it here in my viewport. So it was a slightly different red. I should have probably made that a, a bit more noticeable. So we'll just click this here and now we've assigned that as well. Okay, so now we're not missing any of that information. So next up, let's go take a look at how we can start to texture this visor. So a quick way to kind of navigate to that is I can hold down the Control Alt key and then right click in the area which automatically navigates me here to that texture set. And here I already have a smart material that I created, which is this soldier visor. So I'm just going to drag and drop and place this here at the top of my layer stack. And here you can see that I now have this visor. Now let's take a look at how this was created. So here we have this uh, group and you can see it's a pretty simple setup. Here I just have a base layer and here I have enabled color, roughness, metal, and normal. Now I don't really need the normal, so I can turn that off. But here for my metal, you can see that, well, I'm kind of cheating this a bit in terms of being physically based uh, and giving this kind of a, a metallic value. Now here in the base color, you'll notice that I'm just using a procedural gradient and then I can adjust that here based on this balance setting. Now here, I also have my roughness. I'm, again, I'm using that same grunge map and I'm just using this levels here to process that range. But I also have this new gradient filter. And so if I click this button here, I can add a filter and it allows me to choose from a set of filters. So if you use the gradient filter, what this does here is it gives you a set of color positions. Here you can see that I'm using this kind of dark yellow to this red. And what it does is it takes gradient data that you have. Again, I have that applied here to my base color and it lets me remap that here with this position. And so 
Here you can see that the gradient, the dark yellow is towards the bottom, and then it moves here towards red towards the top. And that's exactly what's happening here. Now, if I come back here to this base and I go to adjust the balance, so as I adjust this balance, you can see that I can start to change the distribution of these color values. So maybe I'll do something like this here. Here you can see that above this, I have another fill layer. This is just set to height. This time I have the height value set to a negative value. And again, I did that same technique where I created a black mask, added a fill effect, and then here I set a procedural noise to create the height. Now, if I come back to my fill here for the height, I have this as a nice slider that allows me to change, kind of interactively change my height depth. And that's how I created the visor. So the next thing that I'd like to do is just navigate here back to my main texture set, which is this kind of upper torso. And I'm going to add an overall dirt effect to everything. So here I'm going to create a fill layer and we'll just call this uh, dirt. And here we're just going to turn off uh, basically all of our channels here. Actually, let's leave metal. Uh, we're going to make sure we set that all the way to zero. Uh, let's just increase our roughness value uh, pretty high, uh, just right around 0.9. And then let's just set uh, a color value here. So let's make it something kind of like a dirt type color. So we'll do something like this. And now we're going to mask this. So we'll right click and choose add black mask. Here uh, with the mask selected, I'll click the effect button and I'm going to add a generator. And then here I'll click the generator button and choose MG dirt. Now it's being cut off here on the screen, but it's right here towards the end, MG dirt. And so here you can see that this is already adding some just dirt. And I can interactively adjust kind of the dirt level here, as well as the overall kind of grunge amount. So I might do something like this. So now that I have this in place, again, I'm going to use layer instancing to send this to all of my other texture sets. And this will also give me one central location where I can just interactively make any changes I need to make. So we'll right click. And then here we'll choose to instantiate across texture sets. Uh, we'll leave the default setting, which is all texture sets enabled, and click OK. And now that dirt has been added to all of the other texture sets. Again, going back here to MG Dirt and making a tweak to this, you can see that it automatically updates all texture sets at the same time. And now with this dirt layer, you can see that it just helps to kind of fully integrate all of our materials together now. So the last thing I want to do to finish off this texture is uh, to create just some glow or emissive effects. So here I'm still on the upper torso. Uh, let's create a new uh, standard layer here. And we'll just simply call this uh, glow. Actually, here, let's do it uh, another way so we can keep things as procedural as possible. So instead of a standard layer, let's create a fill. And here, we're going to call this glow. Now, here in my texture set list, I want to enable an emissive channel. So I'm going to click this plus button. And here, I'm going to choose emissive. And what I'm going to do is just turn off all these layers except for my emissive color. And then here, I'm just going to set an, an emissive color. Let's do something like maybe kind of like this, uh, something like maybe this blue here, kind of blue green, something like that. OK, so now that we have that in place, what I'm going to do is right click, create a black mask. With the mask selected, I'm going to click the effect button, and I'm going to choose a paint. This is going to give me a paint layer that I can paint with here in my mask. So here, with my brush settings, I'm just going to use the standard brush that I have. Uh, I can come over here to my alpha and just increase the hardness. I can hit the control key and the right mouse button just to kind of scale down my brush size. And then here I'm just going to just stamp in a few of these details to create this kind of a miss effect here on my model. So here I'll click again. Now you'll notice that as I click and let go, part of the model disappears. If you come up here to edit and we're going to go to settings, here in the general settings, there's an option here for only display the selected material when painting. We're just going to disable that and click OK. All right, so now we're good to go. And I'm just, like I said, I'm going to come in and just start to just, just paint in some of these kind of emissive areas like this. So here, we'll just paint these guys in. Maybe I'll just kind of rotate around here to the back side of the model. Now here in this case, I want to add uh, some, some detail. I could just come in and just paint this in like this. Might be a little hard to do. So another way that I can do that is just come over here to my 3D, 2D split. So this I can see my UVs here. And with my paint uh, still selected, I'm going to click this Geometry Fill tool. And using the UVs here, I can come in and just click 
to fill based on the UV shell. So here I can see that that's filling this UV shell. So again, here's the uh, other side. I can just click here and just fill that with the UV shell. Just a quick way to kind of handle that. So now uh, I'll just go back here to my brush and then here in this area, I'll just stamp that to put a little bit of a glow into that area as well. And again, it's just a matter of just finding some cool details that we could make as kind of a glow effect. So now that I'm finished with the texturing process, I'm going to just right click and choose export textures. Now here for the configuration, what I want to choose is my document channels. This will export the channels that I created here in my document list. And these are going to give me the correct channels that I need for the PBR shader within iClone. So now that I have that set up, I can set an overall resolution. I'm just going to leave everything here at 2K. Here I have a export directory set and the format. So now that everything is set, I'll click export. Painter will create these textures and then we'll jump over to iClone and then apply those to the PBR shader. Okay, so here we are in iClone and I have the object selected. And then here under the material tab, I can start to add my textures. So you'll notice here under texture settings for the shader type, I have this set to PBR. And now I can start to just load in the maps that I exported from Substance Painter. So for example, here for the base color, we're gonna load in the base color map. So we'll select this channel and then we'll just browse for the texture. So here I've applied the base color and now I'm gonna go through the process of just applying all of the other maps that make up this material. Now, one thing that's important to mention here is that in the texture properties, you can see that we have this use sRGB button and we want to make sure that the shader interprets textures correctly. So for example, the base color needs to be set to use sRGB. However, if we look at grayscale maps, such as our metallic or our roughness, these need to be interpreted as linear. So that is why we have the use sRGB button unchecked. And we want to make sure that we have this unchecked for our AO as well. Here you can see that for the normal map, it is also unchecked because the normal map is read as linear. An easy way to look at this is that any color that you see, such as base color or the glow, is going to need to make sure that use sRGB is enabled and any grayscale textures that represent data, such as AO, metallic, and roughness, are going to be set to linear which means use sRGB is unchecked. Same thing with the normal, use sRGB needs to be unchecked. Here you can see that the glow texture came in with use sRGB unchecked. So here I'm gonna make sure that I enable this. So here you can see that I've added the textures to all the different parts here of this avatar. As you can see, Substance Painter can be used to create physically based materials that can be used directly here in iClone just by simply using the default base color metallic roughness outputs and setting the shader type to PBR here in iClone.